Welcome everyone to our webinar on how to optimize your e-commerce and retail business through digital transformation. My name is Mikla and I'll be your moderator today and I'll be joined by two speakers. Chase Fan, an accountant with us here at Awesome, on the bottom left of your screen and on the bottom middle of your screen from our friends at Youve, the VP of Regional Expansion, Nat Ip, will be joining us and together they'll be sharing a range of insights in order to help you, our audience, broaden your views and shed some light on how digital tools can aid the optimization of your business. Following this, we'll have a Q&A session where you can ask any questions you may have to either of our speakers. So let's get started with Chase, whenever you're ready, Chase. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mikala. Um, hi, guys. So my name is Chase. Um, I, let me just um, go to the next slide. So here's the agenda. Um, um, I'm going to be um, sharing with you guys some information uh, about um, a few different topics today. Um, there's actually quite a few things that I would like to cover today, so I'm not going to um, talk slowly instead. Of, um, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit quicker than usually. Uh, so first of all, I would like to cover like, um, so why do, why do people actually need to adopt um, digital solutions in terms of um, accounting in the future? Um, second of all, um, we're going to talk about um, um, like what's the differences between uh, traditional and contemporary accounting. Um, and then the third one is, um, um, I would like to cover a little bit, uh, what's the difference with, uh, across um, like various industries, um, uh, how, how the digital accounting actually affect um, 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 like all these industries, like for example, F&B industries, uh, um, consultation, uh, crypto industries, or even e-commerce e industry. Um, and then um, the second last one is um, um, like, what are, the, what are the benefits of digital accounting platform? Um, the last one is uh, I will be sharing uh, five different steps uh, for you guys, how to actually digitize your accounting practice for the business success. Okay, so um, first of all, um, um, so when we when we when when it comes to digital solutions, what do you actually think about? So there are actually three um, main concepts, which is um, digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation across a business. Um, so so basically, what digi what digitization means is that um, <clears throat> sorry. So it's, it's only um, like the conversion of text, pictures, or sound into a digital form that can be processed by a computer. Um, and digitalization is um, just like a second level of digitization. So that means um, uh, converting a physical things into digital format, uh, like a picture, uh, a book, uh, an audio, or even a video. Um, and digital transformation is actually a com combination of these two. So it, it, it's more about um, like the, uh, the process of um, digitization and digitalization. So with these three concepts um, as a fundament, uh, fun, fundament, fundamental um, base of your company, um, there are a few benefits um, that you might have uh, for your organization. So for example, it enables a faster decision-making. Um, it allows um, seamless performance tracking. Uh, it also helps generating deeper customer insights and it might be uh, helping to compile more uh, customer experience. Um, and it definitely helps uh, optimizing uh, manual tasks um, and innovating uh, new product services and business models. So for example, um, let me give you guys a really simple um, example. So if you uh, use an online accounting software uh, to generate a profit tax um, statement, um, usually if you use the traditional way, you, 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 you probably only see like, um, like uh, revenue uh, expenses, like plus, minus, and then you have your profits. But if you use uh, like some of the um, uh, like well long uh, accounting software out there, um, you might also be able to generate these kind of figures by projects or by by, by key products. Like for example, you might uh, you might have like product A B C D, um, and and in which you might want to see uh, which one is actually actually doing the best in the in the in the in the previous year and uh, maybe you might want to remove uh, some product lines for the next year or add another product line uh, as well 
um, which I will be covered a little bit more later. Um, yep. So uh, the second slice of my presentation is the transformation of um, two different types of accounting, the traditional way and the contemporary way. Um, so uh, back in the days, uh, like when there's no actually any technical issues or technical support, um, most of the, most of the company they would just hire one person or to do the whole thing uh, using Excel, uh, um, like filing everything physically in 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 a room or in 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 a lockers, which might be um, not making a lot of mistakes, but which. Uh, might be the problem why uh, there's some mistakes that are made because um, like human errors or uh, lots of other like reasons. Um, but with a uh, online uh, accounting software that could be different because um, for example, uh, in our company Awesome Limiter, we do have a group of experts like bookkeepers, uh, tax advisors, um, and accountants for sure. And we have a newly uh, team of audit auditors as well, who will be helping you to look after your uh, company's account, um, the uh, forecast, budgeting, and uh, anything uh, that you would like us to do as well. Um, also, the software is actually cl cloud-based software. So you can um, you don't have to worry about the security uh, or the accessibility. Um, and I will be talking about these two later as well. Um, and you don't have to save or file anything physically anymore. You just need to file it. Um, I mean, you still do need to keep the physical documents, but you don't have to. Uh, I mean, once you once you, once you store it somewhere, you don't have to take it out and then keep looking at, at it again because you you will have the soft copy online. And whenever you need to check it again, you can just go back to uh, your account, lock in your account, um, open the invoice or bill or whatever you would like to see, or even a pay slip and you will see everything you needed. Uh, and by doing it this way, um, there will be less errors, um, like created um, like as a human error. Um, and then um, one, of the, one of the key features that I would like to cover is that um, with the band transaction, um, um, usually if you, do it, if you do it manually, you have to put it in uh, one by one um, as, an, as an Excel file, but if you use um, these accounting software you don't have to do it anymore because most of the, most of them they have um, automation like you you just need you just need to upload your bank statement once and then maybe wait for a few minutes then the whole system will just generate um, an Excel file for you guys and then you can just upload this Excel file uh, onto your online um, software and then everything will be in there. And so when you do the band transfer, or when 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 the service provider uh, they do the um, band reconciliation for your company, it is just only one click away. Um, so it shows all the date amounts and each single transaction transaction line. Um, and I would say not a hundred percent accurate, but maybe at, at least ninety nine percent is the same as your uh, band statement. And also. Um, there's another important thing is is that uh, like what I just said, if you want to generate um, reports like profit loss report or cash uh, cash flow statements, um, these all reports will be customized. Like if you do it um, like with an Excel, um, I'm not sure if you can still. I I I I would say you probably can still do it, but maybe not as um, accurate or as pretty as the accounting software generated one. Um, and uh, in terms of the uh, cost of these two types of accounting, usually if you pay a monthly um, packages to the service provider company, it should be cheaper. I would say at least one third cheaper than hire on, hiring someone else as your uh, accountant or bookkeeper. So let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, industry. So um, because there are actually a, a lot of things that we can look at, I'm not going to go through uh, like every single thing. Uh, I, I'm just uh, highlighting um, a different, like some uh, advantages and maybe some uh, something that I would like to talk about in terms of uh, reporting and analysis. Um, so, so here we have um, food and beverages. 
consultation and cryptocurrency industries. So um, it sounds like these three industries are not really related or similar, but uh, in terms of um, bookkeeping or accounting, um, they're actually not um, um, much different. Um, so basically, um, like for those industries, if you if they have um, um, an online accounting software supporting them, uh, it will be a lot uh, easier and time uh, less time consuming. Um, because, uh, for example, if you work in um, F and B industry, um, obviously you are going to have a lot of um, uh, invoices or bills uh, on a sing on, on a single day uh, on a daily basis, um, um, and if you have um, if you have these um, online software with you, you don't have to worry about or oh, how how am I going to generate um, like like these many uh, invoices at all at one go, and I might have to have a lot of people helping me to do it without this software. But if you have it, uh, you just need to. Um, create one template and then um, you can just click repeat and then just have like the same template for another hundred times uh, as you want or uh, you can just change one thing and then the invoice number will just go uh, one by one as the serial number. So it will be um, a much quicker and better way for these kind of uh, industry to adapt um, digital accounting software for the um, business and operations. Um, and in terms of um, the reporting and analysis, um, what I was talking about, so especially if you are um, um, doing, um, I mean, if you're operating a uh, business in a consultation or even construction companies, um, obviously you're going to have, have uh, different um, clients or project base or maybe construction site, different construction site. And, um, obviously, it, as as a director of the company or CEO of the company, what what would you like to see? It's always the profit, like how much money you are making in the previous year. But but if I just tell you a number, like how do you know how much money you're actually making from project A, B, or C and D? So, with the digital accounting online uh, software, you can also uh, uh, set up um, um, like um, formula to let them know, oh, um, I have these four different projects and I would like to see uh, how much money I'm actually making um, by project A, B, C, and D and how much money I'm actually spending for these projects as well. So I can I can track exactly how much profit I am, I'm making in terms of these four projects uh, instead of just one lump sum numbers. So, uh, if you're having uh, or going to have these kind of business, you can actually think about uh, whether you want to use it or um, uh, hire just an accountant to, to help you to bookkeep everything. Yep. The next slide is about um, e-commerce industry. So uh, I'm pretty sure this this is a very common industry in, um, um, when it comes to um, like people like nowadays like we, we do use Amazon, Taobao or eBay like all these uh, e-commerce platform but uh, usually we are more on the client side but when it comes to the um, uh, the owner side or the employee side um, so according to um, according to the standard chartered Hong Kong SME leading business in, in that survey for the first half of 2022 Almost 90% um, of SMEs expect a rise or no change in the share of e-commerce in the total turnover. And more than 80% of those expecting changes in the investment will remain or even increase in, in increase the investment in information technology. So the importance of digital information cannot be ignored. So um, here are some uh, e-commerce platforms where you can see, um, like maybe some of you don't know what these are. So like Shopify, uh, AWS, uh, Deer, Salesforce, these are all the, actually the backend um, software uh, behind all the e-commerce platforms. So uh, whenever you click buy or whenever you click, uh, whenever, you, whenever you put in your credit card uh, details, uh, this is um, the software where it actually catch all the details of your cost and your information. So then 
that will make sure that um, your parcel, your order is not going anywhere else but to the exact address that you actually gave us. So um, what, 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 what's the most uh, advantage, uh, advantages of using um, these platforms for your business? Um, I, I'm actually ignoring um, everything else, but uh, I'm going to talk about uh, mostly the inventory system. Um, so for example, e-commerce business, if you, um, if you are dealing with a really high volume of daily transactions, like some of our clients, they do have like one to 2,000 uh, daily transactions, one to 2,000 every day. So uh, you, you can't just rely on one person. You, you must have, have uh, someone uh, who, uh, who are actually really um, uh, used to these uh, accounting software to help you to um, like, like sort out all the invoices, bills, uh, and like payrolls and stuff. Um, and not just that, also the inventory in the back end, like because um, what if what if you run out of your inventory? What if you run out of stock? So and you didn't know on time, so you actually didn't have time to buy your stock and and we refill refill your inventory, and that could be a, a really big problem for your business if it sells really well. So. Um, if you have these uh, inventory system uh, supporting with your business, um, I'm, I'm actually, um, like I said, um, these inventory system are all can be um, customized. So you can just let them know, uh, like, let's say uh, one pen um, as one single item, or you can actually sell six pens as one single item as a batch together. Or um, it also helps you to look after uh, the refund system as well. Uh, whenever, whenever you have refunds, um, does it actually refund with the with with the product back to our system or not? And like all these kind of things, um, you can deal with it with only one stop uh, software. Um, and then, in terms of the reporting and analysis, um, it's um, it's 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 it's. It's pretty similar to the one that I talked about. Um, all customized. Um, you will have um, all uh, more accurate and appropriate profit not statement. Uh, all the uh, account receivable, account payable reports, and also um, um, if you want to uh, have a look at the uh, inventory management report as well, and it will be um, uh, it will be able to generate uh, one as well. Uh, in, in terms of like how how many uh, how many products you are going to have uh, have lapped and um, maybe um, you might have some um, like 40 goods and how many 40 goods that are actually worth of and it will be showing in the report as well okay okay so um, so in this slide I would like to um, talk about um, like three main uh, features of the um, digital accounting software. Um, so which is uh, accessibility, reliability, and scalability. Um, so pretty much um, if you ask me, I would say uh, like most of the online uh, digital accounting software is one stop for all you need uh, because everything is stored in the cloud uh, and it is accessible by anyone, uh, reducing operational cost and adapting to our ever-changing uh, environment. Um, it also helped uh, utilizing the technology and cloud-based platforms to uh, automate and streamline the processes. Uh, while the core functions of your business are running itself, while you focus on growing your company. Um, spreadsheets are becoming a thing of the past for startups and entrepreneurs. Um, they no longer have the time to focus on updating admin work. Um, it is easy, efficient solutions to allow you to focus on growing your business and optimizing uh, processes and tasks. So um, how reliable is it? How secure is it? Um, so I'm not sure if you guys heard about uh, the MFA, which is the multi-factor authentic authentication. Um, Usually, um, it, it's just like uh, one more password that's generated uh, on your phone. Um, and whenever you log into your account, you will have to have that code um, generated and then you put it in and then you put it in your password. So there's actually one more protection for your account. Um, and it is way more uh, secure and protected. That's what we worried about. And no one, no one else has access to your organization data unless you invite them to, into your account. 
you control what users can see and do. If what if your computer uh, or laptop is lost or stolen, um, your account is actually backed up and protected online in the cloud. Um, so even if you um, lost your laptop, you can still use another laptop to log into your account and and whoever found your laptop or stole your laptop, they can't log in to your account because they don't have the M M MFA code from your phone. Um, and all the accounting software online storage uh, means you can log in from any device uh, with any internet connection and you're good to go. So how about um, the scalability? Um, so for all the uh, accounting softwares, um, it, they all come from come with features that help the scalability. So you can actually add unlimited team members, uh, some accounting systems uh, of offering more than 700 integrations with other apps through the class leading API. Um, the solutions we can create using online platforms are incredibly flexible. Um, and bespoke to each organization's requirements. Um, from the bill uh, creation through to automated invoicing to payment uh, collection. It also integrates with the inventory management, like I said before, uh, also invoicing, time tracking, expenses, and more. We can quickly get system to the uh, prototype stage at a low risk and cost compared to accounting soft, uh, systems that cost a lot more and offer less integrations possibilities. Okay, so um, here are five steps that I would like to quickly share with you guys um, if you would like to uh, digitize your accounting software. Um, so the first step is have a common mode communication. So uh, accounting is about more than just files, but sheets and getting the job done. Um, so if you can uh, like, uh, have a better communication uh, method or skills with your uh, co-workers and clients, that's definitely a plus to, to your business. The step two, have everything under common software. Um, so processing your account data, such as invoices, payroll, and ARAP on the platform streamlines, workflows, and access to the data. It is important to pick a software that is specifically targeted towards the industry and size of your client base to get the most out of their subscriptions. And then the third step is transitions to uh, online documentation. So like what I said, uh, it, is just, it is just so much easier and quicker if you don't have to, um, if you can actually put it aside all the physical documents and then just keep all the soft copy online uh, on the system. That would be so much easier when you have to find out, uh, I mean, Maybe next year, yeah, you you might have to, you might have to check something again to 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 file your profit tax return, yeah. Um, second last step, transition to online billing. Um, in addition to digitizing your incoming paper receipts, you can also eliminate paper from your own billing. Uh, by moving to an electronic billing system, you are able to automatically send bills to your clients, uh, remind them of due dates, and reduce the carbon footprint of your firm. So it is more eco-friendly as well. The last step, um, um, update your clients in real time. Um, so the old fashioned practice of spending days to offer accounting insights to your clients no longer has to be the long. Now all these accounting software can automatically process all your documents, pull out information and provide you with valuable data in all real time. Um, especially, um, like, there's one uh, software that we are using in a company is called uh, Blue Sheets. Uh, it can process all your clients' uh, AP and AL data automatically, exporting to the accounting software of your choice, um, as well as reporting tools. Um, so, um, I hope these five steps um, can be useful or helpful um, to. Uh, for you to achieve your uh, business goal in the future. Thank you, that's all for today. Thanks for that, Chase. Great. Um, yeah, so I think up next is gonna be Nat. I think she's going to have more information on digitizing things for a business. Take it away. Righty, I will share screen. Um, okay, let me just... 
making to full screen. Um, sure, you guys can see my screen now. Um, let me let me know if you can't. Um, yeah, is that okay? Can you guys Yo. see the screen? Should awesome, right, 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 right. Awesome, okay. All right, all right. Hi, guys. So I'm Nat. I'm from Youth, and I uh, manage Youth the expansions outside Hong Kong. So a little bit background of what Youth is. So Youth is um uh, we actually are a SaaS um, startup that we help business to digitalize so that you know um they can um keep up with the you know the trend that's coming. And we actually been Hong Kong uh, for a couple of years, and now we are actually are expanding to the rest of APAC or even the world. So today we are going to actually go through a bit about um, digital transformation. So what Chase also mentioned about you know the differences between digital um, digitization, digitalizations, and digital transformation. So uh, I'm not going to go through that part, but I want to show you guys what trend where we're heading to, um, and then. We want to know, you know, some of you being here because you're interested in, you know, taking to the next steps, but what kind of things you might need to watch out for that might fail you in this digital transformation. And then um, the third part would be something like, um, even if you, you're not very technical, can you still take part in it and how can you do it? So I'll also give you a little bit, uh, a little bit taste of what works we've been doing in youth and see if this is something that interests you so just you know happy sharing and then a final part we'll share you our um, example how everything comes together because i think what chase mentioned just now about um you know it is the best to have one common platform or software to everything together so i try to tie a bit my presentation to chase as well um he inspired me um throughout his presentation so i took a bit notes so i try to kind of connect back all right, so let's go to the next step. Right, so right now we are, um, so as we, as we all know that because of the pandemic, a lot of people work from home. So a lot of companies actually spend more on SaaS um, software as well. And then as we progress, we're actually not just talking about um, cloud services like, you know, uh, we're talking about Google Drive, or Dropbox, or, or email services, or having a web prison, et cetera. But we're moving more, um, that internal side, even helping them internally uh, manage their business, right? So now, um, let's see, okay, you can't see my mouse, but right now um, about by 2025, 80% of them will actually move to cloud service. So it's really growing. And in particular today, we want to talk about like what's next step, right? So it's great you have a website, you engage a developer, build some apps for you, right? But have we thought about the next step, which is, you know, we are empowering people who don't, code and have technical background to develop so there's this new thing called no code or no code technology so um, it's also a new jargon called citizen developer which means that people in an organization with not so much technical background can also take part and build things for the organization so if you see in this chart there's around 70 percent of them um you know um the, in, the application is actually built by no code um, so I'm, I'm sure you will see more and more of these um, software popping up as well. Um, and then eventually, um, I think this also ties to what um, Chase mentioned about this one platform, one centralized part to manage everything. Um, I think this is quite, some of you might experience that you have multiple accounts. Maybe you use one password, which is great, but then you still have to log into a different account. So it's kind of a troublesome. It would be uh, such a perfect world if you know you can have one place and um, you know, manage different things. So, and surprisingly, not really surprisingly, but for this trend, actually the fastest growing is this side of the world. So I'm, sh I'm really sure that uh, it'll get really exciting in the coming years. So let's look into the next page. All right, I try to taste out of it. All right, so um, these are actually very common reasons that maybe it's, you know, some digital transformation of some company kind of fail. Um, I think the first thing first is a very global phenomenon phenomena is that um, technical talent is in, in lack, um, not just in, in particular country, but everywhere every, you see people being hiring, want to hire developers or, or all the technical data scientists or, you know, all sorts of technical talents, but it's, it's difficult. It's even if you can find, right? It's, it's the same as, you know, what Chase mentioned about one man accounting, one man band is really hard to do. So even it's hard if you have one 
But if you think about some SME might not have one, they even have no technical talent, then it's difficult, right? Then they probably spend a bit of money and engage uh, a third party to do so. And then um, it, it, there's this um, missing gap. So this is, you know, a missing gap that sometimes you might want to communicate your ideas, but the other side just don't get it because they're not you. They don't have your domain experts, right? So there are a lot of back and forth communication and then you're tired, they're tired, and then not just the timeline drags, but also the money spent drags as well. So that's another thing. And also there are a couple of like um, SaaS product out there, which is great, um, but they're not made for your business, right? So if certain type um, of business process that you want to use the, the software, but it, it, it just won't customize for you, right? Then you probably have to work around. So, um, and work around, maybe you, you cut some of your process or you do some of the process differently, but this kind of defeat the purpose of actually using a software, right? You want to use the software to safely work. Um, and the last part is, um, I think that also ties back to when you have too many different um, software that don't integrate with each other. Um, then, you know, there, there's some data silo, you, you need to, um, you know, copy and paste, or maybe you need to uh, write it down and then re-input. So there's a lot of time wasted. It also, it costs a lot of error. Um, so these are always the time, or everything like come together, makes the transformation fail because not just um, it's actually bad, but it makes you very tight and try to tie things together. So um, this is what's happening. And then, right, so not not going to dive too deep about telling you about the product, but I want to show um, explain what actually no code is. So no code means that a lot of time you use um, um, drag and drop. So there are a lot of things I want to give some like real life example that you can think of. So if you come across, you know, some some Google products or some, you know, type form product that you can create forms. So this is kind of like drag and drop. We pick it quite nicely, right? You don't need to code anything. And then you have a perfect, nice form with your branded thing. Or you can also have um, a couple of things like website, right? You can create a nice website with Wix or, you know, WordPress. And these are like the things, actually, this is also kind of like the no code thing. You can think of that this way. Um, and then you're also um, trying to create um, other aspects of this no code thing, but... Um, is that sometimes if you, I'm not sure, but if you go to emails and you want to filter out certain email from certain domains, right, to go to a folder in this email, then this is actually also like no code. You didn't code. You just say that okay, if this comes, you enter some the the, the system already prepared for you. you. Just need to enter the email domain that you want, and then they will do the work, right? So this is actually also a form of how it's presented to you, right? And then uh, a lot of things, um, and then I think if we talk about low code, then it's a bit like if you ever use Excel, you use formula, right? And then you do some, if A equal to something, then B will be something, right? So this is this is actually a little bit like coding. So this kind of tie back to no code. So uh, I'm sure I want to use these like real life examples to, you know, get your mindset, oh, how you know this no code or low code um, our evolution actually slowly involving us because at the end of the day um, we still want um, you to participate in the creation process okay um, so now look at the, um, let me just go into this this sounds a bit like you know what's going on here so there, there are three graphics here right now you see um, the one on the left is actually a widget form so widget is also uh, actually we call these days we call this um, a component base so a component base is also a very, um, it's also been a trend around for a long time. So what people are trying to do is they want to make it uh, scalable. So for example, um, one of a design tool called Figma, they, they really have this um, component based um, design. So let's say you create some component for a design. So let's say one button, right? And then you make it in a component. And then for that component button, you can make it um that that is your main button so if you make it bigger or different colors then it will reflect on all the other work that you have used this button before so in this way you don't need to go to every single one to you know drag and and make sure it's in the right um, size or it's the right color tone so this is a component based thing so if you look at the one the um, graph on the left 
uh, which is these kind of things. It's actually a component based widget to create a form. So you can, you know, pick one. Just when I say pick one, it's actually very simple. You drag and drop in, you put into your, it could be your website, or it could be a form in our case, right? And then you create the things that you need. Um, so it's it's very official. So which is um, also quite nicely. So I think this also um, brings back to the, um, to the point that these days, like when it comes to no code or or the, the trend is that we want to make things special. So I think when it comes to visual, um, what there's this like programming for kids called scratch programming, they actually use like building blocks to create programming um, instead of, you know, typing. So this is also something that demonstrate how, you know, this part of like component based um, building blocks is happening to all of us um, without us knowing. And then the second part, if you see in the middle, it looks a bit, you know, kind of like a workflow. Yes, it is a workflow. So this is also something people can create um, by drag and drop and then fill in certain information, right? So this is also a very visual um, thing rather than I'm going to write if A meets B, then C, you know, and then there's another branch, right? So we want to make it very visual and it's... um drag and drop also a lot of function that is served so um it can um it, it's actually if you can imagine this like the you know just now i mentioned the email case right how you say if um i received email from at um let's say there's an email called email at imspam.com right then you will look for okay if the domain name is i am spam then throw it away so that's that's an action so you can actually not exactly that in our case, but then this is something that you can say the event is domain name equal um, I am spam. And then the next step is just, you know, what you do, throw it away. Um, that's that's this part of it. And then the third part is, um, it's also about how, um, I think one of the things that um, I want to tie it back to the traditional accounting, I think Chase mentioned something about not very flexible reporting, right? It's only one way. So I think, these days, um, no quotes also wants to make it very simple. So what you see on the right hand side, it's like a you know a, a role based worksheet, right? So there are a lot of things with because you have collected these data, you can do you can make it into like a charts, you can make it like a kanban based on certain view that you want to set it as the um, um the the status for the kanban. So a lot of things that um these days you can also do um, with this no no code um, product. So not just you, of course. Um, I'd love to share the, um, more about you, but I just want to show you that this is a bit um, what we, where we're heading to. And then, um, okay, so let me just go back. So, but let me know if I talk too fast, you know, can raise some questions in the question box and I'll answer you later. Okay, I will just go through this part. Okay, so I have created this. Um, so it comes with this animation. So I'll just go for a, a bit more detail, right? So um, I think this this ties back to my first screen. I was mentioning something a lot of times, a very standardized, you know, SaaS product doesn't fit into your business process, right? And then you kind of have to drop a, a workflow or some certain tweaks, right? Then it's not very unique. And, it's, it's if you want customized, it might sounds like a cost a lot and sounds like it's gonna take a lot of time to build, right? So we actually have um this okay, so this is you, you plus um is our product, is a no code product. So we actually just um I think if you look at the left image and the right image, so the right one is about the workflow and then the left one is a form. So anything you see is actually can um um, customize or you can make it to your liking you know the text or, or the size or what's the trigger point all these things right so because you're not now restricted by um, the fields given to you by any um, SaaS product you can actually do you know as you like and you can um, if you see in the middle um, it's actually a purchase order form and it's actually created through um, um, the left form the left the, the widget form and what it does is saying that, okay, if um, you can actually, uh, let's say someone asks for a quotation, we can actually press a button and then actually turn a purchase order or a quotation form for them. And these are all 
be can be done through a workflow and trigger. I think this also ties back to what Chase mentioned before, you know, keep your um, client update, right? So imagine there's this client always want to know when you get a quote, right? And But if you know your, um, you know that, okay, if a client is, uh, they ask for, let's say, apples, right? and they ask for a range of price, you already have the price in the list. You can actually create a workflow to give them an auto quotation right away. And also if there's any changes, let's say you increase the price or there's a discount to the price, you update it in the system because you also set a workflow to say notify these customers um, who you who say they're interested in apples or orange, right? Through WhatsApp, you can also set it up. And then whenever you update, there's a change. They can also get a WhatsApp. So this is very powerful because firstly, you don't need to check who you haven't talked to. You go through your whole WhatsApp list to go through with them or you don't need to um, make sure, like you don't need to see if um, there are certain people who are interested or not interested. You don't want to spam them, but it's kind of hard to, you know, filter them on your WhatsApp. So this is a very easy way, um, but I'm not going to go through too much. And then we have two more. Um, so this is just something visual to share. Okay. Um, so also uh, we're saying that, okay, we want a very flexible way to see data, right? Because people dip receive information differently. And I think this digital transformation is also part of how we transform our behavior of how we receive information. So if you look at these ones, right, you can actually see um, the, okay, let's talk in the top left, that corner, that one, the app itself is actually a, uh, 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 a bar, bar chart, I think it's a bar chart. So it's, it's actually created just by drag and drop, nothing too fancy. And this this chart meant to illustrate something about like um, how many quantity of certain products are inquired or quotation or quoted or delivered. So you can actually compare and compare through the timeline. And it's very simple because these days you don't need to go back to Excel and you know, kind of go through the view and see if you pick the right view and to create an update, right? This data will update by itself as long as you pick the right timeline you're looking for. Um, but at the same time, let's say I don't want to see it in such a format. I can also see in the top right corner, like the Kanban, based on what steps we're looking at. Um, or let's say I, I prefer the, um, the good old way, if, sorry, good old way of like worksheet then. Okay, so yeah, worksheet then you can actually look into um, bottom right. So you can see the different status, right? So it's very clear you look into it. And if you look at this screen, you also see this something called purchase item details. Sorry, very little, very small. Um, it actually ties to another table. So this also ties back to what we're talking about, the data uh, the silo, you know, they're not talking to each other. Um, you actually now have a really full, um, compression view of all what's going on within your business. So this is something that um, it's just important because now we are, you know, at this stage of digital transformation. And then there's this last part. Um, okay, so this is also ties back to uh, control, right? Um, so we have customized something, but we also don't want to over, let's say either, we either don't want to um, overload people, our team members um, with too much information or we don't want to give them too much right we actually can set things on a very um, specific level so this is something that um, what I think uh, what Chase mentioned before that these are the right so and now we don't need to um, set into like sorry we actually now can be very specific and is it are we not showing them a certain you know data form or we're not sure so showing them certain even certain fee within a, a form and so this is something that we can also do um with you but um yeah not going to detail for the product it's not meant to be a product pitch um so let's go to the next one just um the next one is my final slide um just to share a bit about um you know a case study of how things fit together right so you can put aside this youth management platform icon, but just look at this case because um, uh, I think the topic of today is about e-commerce and retail. So I picked something more aligned. So this is what it looks like. Um, you know, maybe you have your shop front, right? It could be at Shopify, Amazon, or you can just, you know, have this 
WhatsApp business to collect your your leads or your interests, or you you engage a distribution channel, or you actually list in、uh, physical shops, or you actually have a shop, right? These shop front thing, you need somewhere that that I think a middle to the、um, back end to help you manage it, right? So you can use existing tools out there, which I already put some icons there, right?、Uh, or you can use part of what you can offer as a module to you know. And all connect together and help you manage. And on the other side of the things, then you can, based on this information, you can you know create the product management, make your tactics. Depends on、um, what's the demand. Maybe based on the information you receive from a customer, is that、um, they like certain colors. They keep asking for it, but you never have it. Or、um, there's certain、um, sales. Then let's say we have ten products, nine of them selling really well. Only one of them didn't sell too well. So you use these data. You can actually make up. An informed decision to to plan your product planning, etc., etc., or you can even tie into this to your end delivery,、um, or what you know about an invoicing、um, tool as well. So there are a lot of things.、Um, what I want to bring out is that there are a lot of things that you can do. It can be you know engage some like、um, existing tools out there, or you can use like part of. Um, some existing no code and then、um, integrate them together. Have this platform that serves you best. So now I think we are at a stage that we don't need to. I think businesses in general don't need to、um, just resort to one tool that they they not、um, they need to fit their business business flow with. But it's more the the way around how the software fit into their day to day, so that you know can help them to manage the digital. I would say the internal side as、um, digital savvy as their external website or you know、um, e-commerce site or even how how fancy it looks in the Instagram shops as well. So that's my last.、Um, that's my last slide. I will、uh, I'll pause here and I'll just bring the full back to the moderator. Let me just try to stop this. Great. Thanks for that. Right. Perfect. Okay, so I think we've got a couple questions actually.、Um, let me just go through it. So, um, just for Nat from Selena,、um, could you share which are the top few industries that have been adopting digitalized solutions from you? And does it take a long time to set up in the testing and integration process? All right,、uh, I think、uh, first thing let me just. Explain like youth well self. We actually have a lot of things like youth plus is just one side of it, which I covered today. Um, if you're talking about youth plus in particular, um, a lot of firms actually it's really really fairy. Um, you know we have CPA customers. We have um, I think we have a, a cross border influencer management company that they they find that you know it's it's about. They they're really using a CRM, but they want to have something more tailored to themselves, right? So it、uh, I don't think there's a particular industry that they would use. We even have、um, honestly overseas we have a pearl farming, you know,、um, customer that trialing with us to help them manage. So this is sounds very niche, right? But it's at the end of the day, it's really to for them to fit into the unique business process and also for the user to have control、um, what they want to make without. You know, engaging another、um, de developer, which might take time and costly, etc. Um, was there a second part? How long does it take time to set up? I think set up is um, it's actually quite simple. You know, you, we you can actually sign up on our website now today. You can just try it out and see how it works. Um, you know, and also we do have some pre-selected applications to get you started. But if you want to be super brave, go help yourself and you know create something from scratch, play around with it. You can also do that. Um. I think also integration part. It really depends on what we're looking at, you know. Because let's say if we want to tie up with some kind of more or well known, not that easy to integrate party, right? Then、um, I wouldn't have an answer right away.、Um, but we will, you know, we can work together to see how thing works. But、um, we've been looking at、uh, also integrating with some accounting side as well. Because、um, honestly speaking, accounting. That module is not our best. We also have, but not so much at our best. So,、um, highly recommend you use this one, and then we work together to get the whole few covered. Perfect. Okay.、Um, so, another question from Gary now, and I guess this is for both of you:、um, Is this cloud-based, and which and where are the servers? 
I uh, guess maybe Nat or Chase, you want to answer that? Chase is thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's, Chase, a, that's, a good, that's a pretty good question, actually. I have never thought about it. Um, I guess it depends on uh which um which which um which online accounting software that you are going to use because obviously um if they have their own um like servers then um so for example I know I know a uh, zero um um or some other like a kind of software um they all have their own uh, uh like server or server room um and they all like uh they all located in different areas like some of them they're in New Zealand some of them they're in like San Francisco and some of them they're like uh, they're probably like in in, in the UK so um it, it it depends but um um yeah but it wouldn't matter like uh where they actually store the servers as long as it's cloud based um it should mm. be uh like like uh like around and like whatever you are you should be still able to log into your account and check the stuff yeah if that's mm. what you're asking <laughs> yeah great and uh, what about for you nat in terms of like right uh yes <laughs> Of course, cloud-based, you know, 80 or 70 percent of the enterprise is moving towards cloud. We're definitely one of them. Um, yes. Uh, where's the server? Ah, I like this question, right? So currently, <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, hmm, how do I answer this? <laughs> so we are uh, currently, I think our, our server is now with Tencent or something. But we are trying to move around based on our um, part partners and customer requirement. For example, we're talking with um, some interest party in Indonesia and then they mentioned something that, uh, you know, because of the government or um, there's some regulatory thing, you need to actually sit in Indonesia. Well, if this is the case, might as well, you know, we'll move to Indonesia. So I, I think same as what Chase said, it doesn't really matter as in the cloud, but it's more about how you do your security thing, right? Um, to, to make it and also I think a lot of things we want to touch on is a lot of um, these days when it comes to data um, there's a lot of encryption to make it anonymous so um, I think this is one thing that uh, we also look into in doing it especially if this eventually going to tie to an even bigger picture right everyone wants to know their placing but they don't want to share themselves so anonymous data is the way to go um, for it. I think that ties us over into our next question really well um and this is something we get a, a lot at OSIM as well. Um, for those with privacy concerns, how do you address this with your particular software solutions? So I guess for Chase as well as for Nat. So just clients that are more um, or just individuals that are worried about their data, they're mm -hmm. working with service providers. How, how can they get peace of mind that their data is not just floating out there? Or you can't just look at it in the office or anything like that mm. how would a client have peace of mind with you too mm. yeah i think i think what um oh, i want to also tie back to what what chase mentioned before he mentioned something about like you know you use certain tools right and then unless you want to engage the the, the party to help you with it then you need to share with them so this is actually a permission based sharing right um of course uh, the ser if you have to say in such a way, we have the server, you know, we were definitely going to go in and have a look. But I, I don't think it's this way. It's more about because you basically encrypt it, right? And then um, secondly, we actually, also I think, we, we, let's say we put it this way, we have this application, right? Customers, they're happy with it. But then if they really have a problem with it, right, they need to engage us then. We can only access, actually, as of speaking, we can only access their thing if, if they add us as a user. We can't actually help them. Um, okay. So, yeah, and it's quite straight in this. At first, I thought, you know, maybe there's a super user can do it, but no, there's no such thing. And also, I think it's, it's also boils down really to the um, encrypted the thing. And also these days, you know, also the that side of the world, Europe mentioned something about GDPR that's really, um, you know, strict on this, stringent on this. So uh, I guess there's going to be more and more um, people. And, and one more thing. Every single time, if um, something related to data these days, you have to sign or, or you have this little checkbox, I think. So I think as a consumer, informed users, you know, maybe you also you can really spend time to read the terms, but mostly people don't. Um, but yeah. Okay. 
Great. Um, yeah, and then Chase, just um, just on privacy well, concerns. Um, I, I'm just going to add a, a few things. So I think we, there are two things that we can look at, like, um, on the hardware basis and or on the software basis. The software basis, basis is what I was talking about in my presentation, the MFA um, multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. code. Uh, so whenever you, you log in, you actually need... Um, uh, like a specific code from your phone to lock in. And also, um, as a client, um, because our, our awesome uh, company, like we all have our own laptop, um, like, like let's say, um, like myself, I can't use my manager's laptop. My manager's can't, just because he she's my manager, she can't use my laptop. Um, so, um, so all the, all the documents um, should be um, stored and saved in a sp specific uh, server. And only um I think only it it's only accessible to um those management level uh, staff or whoever um uh, have requested these documents can be um, accessed to these um, um, files. Um, um yeah, pretty much great. Okay. And um, yeah, I think we've got another question from Nav with uh, two upvotes. Um, what are some key points for the future of commerce businesses? What should they expect or keep an eye out for in terms of optimization? To be honest, I think it's going to be e-commerce, like, like, because as you can see in the past two to three years in Hong Kong, a lot of shops, the actual uh, actual shops on the street they are closed down you don't see them anymore uh, yeah. and like one is because there's no more people shopping around two is because uh, it's just way too expensive to rent to rent a place so um, imagine if you um, keep everything online or digital um, like what I was just talking about or like what uh, Let was talking about um, using all these digital platforms can actually help you or your business to reduce um, the cost um, highly. Um, you might save mm -hmm. a lot of money in these um, uh, in these things, and then you can you might rather spend this money to in in, in something else, mm -hmm. uh, maybe to to explore uh, some other products that you would like to uh, like to sell or uh, hire some other technicians or like a, a specialist um, uh, to, to to enhance your your business or your your company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how about from you, Nat? Uh, I think actually, I think, I think, um, I think, okay, sorry, I keep saying, I think I started with uh, SME advertising, right? We did social media, Facebook and Google. So I, I think the first thing is actually being found online, right? So it's already, you know, now everyone get found online, you need a web present. And then now that other you get found, you can buy online. That's what Chase said, you know, e-commerce. And then now it's really about the social commerce, right? People trust people or they want to be um, the person who served them, even they know it's a chat bot, right? But they sound so human-like. So this is like the way because we want to make it personable at the same time we want to scale. So I think this is more, it's like the next step of how it works. And by having, having these social interaction right it also built the brand and built the followers um and also i think one key thing we need to know is about the demographics of people to tend to you know go on this TikTok thing or instagram thing or share or whatever even more than ever that they do now um so i think the social expert definitely need to keep an eye on and i think back in a bit let's say 10 years ago or something but there are already some certain things called semantic analysts to you know, to kind of detect the tone of how people tweet about certain products, right? I think now they call this social listening something. So it's been a while, but now I think it hits the, you know, the, the what do you call it, main, mainstream adoption that yeah. really need to look into it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and then I believe we had a previous question from way early on that actually Chase um, answered. So um from katie she said i've been using traditional accounting what should i anticipate consider if i want to switch and digitize my accounting so maybe you'd like to answer that for everybody on the stream uh Chase. yes yeah sure so so pretty much um um going from traditional accounting to digital accounting 
um, the, the, the first difficulty that you might find is that um, training, because um, like I just said, um, with traditional accounting, what you use is Excel only, or not, not even Excel, maybe just a piece of paper with a calculator. Um, but if you want to jump from there to digital accounting, then you might have to have someone um, um, to, to, to learn the whole thing again. But even if you don't have that person, it doesn't matter. Our company can actually provide like all these type of services are uh, helping you because uh, uh, we have a, 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 group, of, a group of experts um, in the company uh, helping you to uh, do all the bookkeeping, accounting, auditing, um, or even um, have a think about uh, like the um, uh, forecast, forecasting or budgeting um, in, in the future years. Um, so um, um, in terms of the um, training, training section, I think not just how to use um, the, account, um, the software, but also know how to uh, interpret um, the new format of the uh, financial statements. So um, if you are having like different products or different projects of your business, uh, you might want to know uh, which one is actually doing better than the others, uh, or uh, like, and you might want to plan uh, what to do next, uh, next few years. Like, should you actually keep these products or services or should you not? Or do you actually have more money to hire more people? Uh, or can you actually um, maybe uh, expand the market, not just um, in Hong Kong or maybe even somewhere else? Um, digital accounting can help you to do all this kind of stuff, um, definitely. Hmm. Great. Okay. And um, I think we've got another question. Um, what's the one thing businesses should automate to save the most amount of time if there was one thing? from each of you that you think would just be a great time saving? No, oh, I have one right away. <laughs> but actually, I thought about it. I, I looked yeah, at the question. Um, I think it, it sounds very simple, but actually I do think it, it lay is a pillar of everything, no matter you're facing your external or your internal, is you automate the following up or the reminding, okay? So why I said this is that you think about internally right you work with so many people everyone has different projects different priorities right there's always you have this action point you want to do right but if you never follow up or never consistently following up then you don't get a result because it always falls into the bottom of someone's list right but for yourself to allocate time to follow up it's it's, it's it bring your mind share away from what you're working on right and you constantly have to set the back of your mind so uh it's very manual one follow up as well but at the same time you can actually structure it right so this is one thing. And if it's customers or let's say you have sales pitch, right? You want to say, or you want to follow up with your leads or your customers. Um, you want to get onto this promo, right? This is also follow up because at the same, you know, different priorities, you always will come up to the bottom of the list if you don't bring, trying to bring it back, right? And if you want to do it yourself all the time, also very manual, you know, repetitive, you become a router yourself. And I do think this sounds simple, but it's really... Uh, the most important thing that not just saving time, but also getting result for you. Okay, perfect. And how about you, Chase? Oh, I would just say from the accounting perspective, it's always um, the transactions. If we can optimize all the transactions into the system, mm -hmm. oh, and that's, that saved my whole life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think, um, I think we can call it there thank you for participating in this webinar everybody and i hope you've all gained some insight from both of our speakers today thank you nad and thank you chase for joining us today giving your thanks insight for the questions. thanks everyone thank you everyone okay see you